There's never a shortage of news on a Friday, it appears, because the world is in chaos. Uh, but it used to not be this way because we had a great person that was our Secretary of State and the head of the CIA, and that is uh, our friend and senior counsel for global affairs, Mike Pompeo. And, uh, Mike, we've talked about this before, and I'm glad you're on today because I'm trying to get some sanity into what is otherwise a uh, an unbelievably chaotic, as one of our callers said, a world we're living in right now. The Senate has a version of the National Defense Authorization Act, and it looks like now we're going to have a fight between the Senate, not shockingly, you've been a member of the House, and the House of Representatives, which uh, stripped some of the funding for what's been deemed to be more of a a woke or liberal agenda in a national defense bill. Uh, It seems like we're fighting for the soul of the military here, the greatest military force in the world. Yeah, it's good to be with you. It is it is quite a quite a week to watch, and I, I am confident too that the world is watching how America responds to these challenges too. This National Defense Authorization Act for for those listening and watching, right? That that provides the core outlines for how our civilian and military leadership operate our military. Um, the House of Representatives simply tried to get back sanity, right? Promoting people based on merit, not taking tax, taxpayer money to underwrite abortions. These are core things that have been at the center of our military for an awfully long time. And I'm very happy that the House of Representatives has taken this on seriously. I hope they will continue to stand on this ground. It can't be the case that you you hear people saying we have to get we have to get the politics out of the NDAA. Well, the politics were inserted into our military by the Biden administration. Right. Every vehicle being climate neutral. This is this is about a lethal fighting force, and the House has done a really nice job of presenting their NDAA, protecting those young sailors, airmen, Marines, folks in the Space Force. These are the people that this is about. This isn't a big policy fight in an abstract sense. This is about the reality of our men and women who are sacrificing their lives to serve our country. The thing I always worried about is you're, you're, we're always just one event away from you know engaging our military that's just in our history as a country for over 250 years i mean just it's the way it happens and uh, events take place and you've served at the highest levels of government secretary of state director of the cia member of congress i i get concerned when i talk to members of the military that that our readiness might be affected here um when you were in office our military was probably at its apex i think of preparedness and now you've got the Ukraine-Russia conflict that's, I know, stretch resources, especially our, our ammunition and so forth. Where do you see, how are we positioned right now as far as your view of our military strength and capacity to engage if necessary? Yeah, I remain convinced that we have the greatest military in the world, the most capable leaders, the greatest young men and women who are serving. We have a technological advantage that is maintained, but frankly, that gap is closing I'm worried about six months or a year or five years from now. You've watched, Jay, the data coming out of our military suggesting they're missing their recruiting targets by huge numbers, yeah. tens of thousands of people. Uh, that will that will filter through our service. We won't have the young sergeants and the young privates and the young lieutenants uh, out there two years from now, four years from now. There'll be this, this gap. And we know why. We know that they tried to use – the political process to insert a bunch of crazy social ideas into the greatest meritocratic institution that has raised people up throughout our society for decades. And that's a real risk. And our adversaries are certainly watching that as well. We have to make sure that we protect these young people so that they can continue to say, yep, I want to go be a Marine. I want to go be a soldier. And when we, we drive our military away from its intended mission, its real purpose, young people will choose to go do something else with their lives. I want to return to, a, it's more of a domestic issue, although obviously international implications. And you've been uh, raising the alarm about the influence the Chinese Communist Party's had with these Confucius centers and institutes all over the college campuses. We've seen it uh, firsthand. We've dealt with some of these issues. Now, as parents are preparing their kids to go back to school, uh, they probably aren't thinking about national defense in the classroom. Uh, you have a new piece up at ACLJ.org. It's titled, The Chinese Communist Party Has No Place in Our Children's Classrooms. That's an alarming title for parents. W- what are we concerned with here? Jay, what we're watching, and and we talked about this when we were in office as, as a practitioner, the, the Chinese Communist Party has a massive propaganda arm. They call it their united front, but suffice it to say, it shows up in our school systems, including not just our universities, but our high schools. It shows up as, hey, here's a check for 
you know, five thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars to build a new jungle gym or a new library for your school. All good. Schools need the resources, but make no mistake, there comes with a tie to that. There comes with a cost to that. And that cost is the political influence that brings alongside of that money. And so I would just tell parents, um, watch how our you, our high schools are having their curriculum impacted by these this money. Watch how this money is beginning to impact how superintendents and principals and school board members are thinking about resources for their country. We make sure that all of the resources and money that come into our schools are aimed at the singular thing, which is to make sure our kids are prepared to lead successful lives. And you should note too, the teachers unions themselves are, are, not, uh, are not outside of the purview of what the Chinese Communist Party is approaching. They talk of Chinese Communist Party talks about American decline. They're not just observers, Jay. You know this at the ACLJ. You guys have been working on this. They are actively trying to undermine our historic Judeo-Christian understanding of who we are as Americans. And we can't let that happen. And we shouldn't let the Chinese Communist Party drive that either. I want to talk one more point on this, and that is the, when you were in office, um, this was a centerpiece of, of dealing with this curtailing of the influence of these Confucius centers and these other, inf- I call them points of influence that we had. Parents organizations that are, are starting to see this in their local, you mentioned like the, the gym, I mean, the, the, the jungle gym or the, the resources for the, the playground areas. And it's, it seems so innocuous, but when you've got the, with the funding comes something. I mean, we all know that we've been around the block here. Funding comes with something and that something is influence. And how important is it then for the school boards? This we go right back. We're talking about national security issues are now right down on the school boards to the school boards to be transparent about where they're getting their funds from as these, quote, improvements are being made. <laughs> no, you've got it exactly right. Yeah. It does seem so innocent, right? Right. Uh, here's here's six hundred dollars for a swing set. Here's here's two thousand dollars to put some books in your classroom. But parents should ask hard questions about where that's coming from. And when there's a Chinese Communist Party nexus, when there's a outside party providing these resources, you should always ask what do they think they're getting from this? Just as we are, it is very reasonable to ask, what did the folks who gave Hunter Biden money think they were getting in exchange for their money? What services did they believe they were yep. gaining? The Chinese Communist Party providing money to your high school or your middle school or your elementary school, make no mistake about it, they believe they're getting something. Every parent should have the right to ask their school boards or their principal, hey, what came alongside of these resources? Last question. You mentioned the Hunter Biden situation. So the plea bargain, the judge says, I've never seen anything like this in my life. Do you have any precedent for this? No, we don't. Uh, We just based it on the facts and circumstances. So that plea bargain gets blown up. It does seem like, I mean, and then you got the additional charges against uh, the former president. So now it's like it it, it starts, whether it is or isn't, it just starts to look like a two-tiered system of justice and a pile on. I mean, here, I mean, what's your read on this? I mean, you worked, you worked as closely as anybody with the former president. So you you know what he's thinking right now. This is all coming to him and he just kind of deals with it. But I do. We all know what he's thinking because yeah. he continues to talk about it. There's yeah. no secret there. No. Uh, look, your, your point's yeah, I used exactly. I to say obstruction right. in plain sight, right? <laughs> I mean, give me a break. <laughs> yeah. Look, look your, your point's exactly right. Uh, you ever seen anything like that, Jay? No. <laughs> You've been around this no, a long time. No, for 42 think, years of practicing law. I think the judge asked the perfect question. And frankly, the prosecutor answered it candidly saying, nope, never done anything like this before. Uh, when you have the son of the then vice president, now president, getting a deal that no one's ever gotten before that is that is unique, bespoke, sui generis, just unheard of, unprecedented was, I think, the word that was used. You know that this wasn't an arm's length plea agreement. This was for sure. something different from that. And that's that's not good. That's uh, That suggests to the American people properly that the institution is no longer acting in the way that it should. And I'm glad the judge asked those questions. Yep. I'm happy that the prosecutor answered it honestly. And now it's time to actually handle this in the way that they would handle this if this was not the son of the president of the United States. All right, Mr. Secretary, have a great weekend. Thanks, Thanks for being with Dave. us as always. And we appreciate your comments and insights on this. 